Hello, Patrick. Nice to have you join us here for Connects this week from the rink. Different venue for you. <laughs> set up, set up at uh, your friendly yeah. little condiments shelf. So awesome. if you can catch up or mustard, I'm ready to go. It's ambience. Well, yeah, you always bring the spicy takes, Patrick. Um, <laughs> so for seven, eight years, we've been talking about meaningful games in March. Like the irony is are these games meaningful like they feel if i mean, look i aside from the angst of last week when they lost to sure. the capitals um couple of really sort of straightforward yeah they won they didn't weren't super impressive but just you know they're in the midst of this mammoth homestand they're they're well in the playoffs it's not like there's any tension yeah what does it feel to you like this team's i don't, I don't want to say treading water i mean they're they're moving forward, but it just yeah. seems like, okay, let's get to the playoffs already, right? Yeah, I mean, a little bit of that, absolutely. Um, I, there is still meaning, obviously. I mean, as I wrote today, there's this playoff qualification situation that they basically win their next two games and they are officially in the playoffs and they can start talking about that. Um, you know, I talked to someone last night, you know, trying to poke around the question of the uniforms in the playoffs, and they're being very quiet, very careful, which leads you to think maybe they wear the skate. But more than anything, the point was made, listen, we're just not – trying to talk about any of these kinds of things until we've officially done it so you know the, the internally you know that matters to them um that that, that getting there where they haven't been you know, i mean they haven't played a whole playoff game in nine years right like that's yeah. important um that matters the players you know obviously want to just have that locked in emotionally mentally and then listen like jt miller did bring it up last week like I think these guys do want to be number one in the league, right? Like the the, the president's trophy for all its sort of, um, you know, all the kind of heat it takes. It in this scenario like this, it does matter. Like the players, like they recognize how strong the start was to their season. That they 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 recognize what sort of a validation that would be. Obviously, it's not the Stanley Cup, but there is sort of an emotional, at least this group anyway. There is a bit of an emotional validation that, that that getting something like that would really matter. So yeah, I think for them it matters, and you know, for the coach, obviously, Asper talking about this last night, and, and and the most important thing, I mean, obviously, he wants his team to win and needs his team to win, but it's it is how his team wins, and the fact that his team is playing so well defensively um, it is a big 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 thing for this team, and and they're not giving away much. I mean, obviously, Montreal is a very very young team with a lot to learn, um, but. You know, you look at the the broader storyline. Yes, there was the struggle last week against Colorado. Yeah, there was the stinker against Washington. But even against Washington, defensively, they were pretty sound. It's that they couldn't score. They couldn't do things on offense. So it, it, there is lots for them to go. Yeah, 12 games is a long time to work through these things, more than you want. Um, there's probably still going to be a few dog games to come. But no, the... Funny enough, these are meaningful games in March, and certainly not the way that we used to talk about them, whether they're going to make yeah. the playoffs or not. This is about playoff positioning, it's about qualifying for the playoffs, and it's about being first overall. I do find this a fascinating subject. We could probably talk for hours about it. We won't, I'm just letting people know we won't, but we could. Um, you know, obviously, I'm a big soccer fan. I uh, yeah. grew up, you know, born in England, was sort of raised in that introduction to sport where you do have these other trophies that mean something and the yes. League Cup. The, the right. FA Cup in England, the Champions League, and the yeah, winning yeah. the league, finishing first overall, yeah, yeah. is probably the biggest prize there is. Now, hockey yeah. tried to introduce that. Yeah, I don't even know when it came in in the 90s, certainly, uh, for the, with the President's Trophy. Early, early 80s, I think, yeah. Yeah, it's it's never taken traction. Like, yeah. in fact, it, it used to be something that was mocked. I remember a dear departed <laughs> friend Botch mocking it. Yeah. And, you know, part of it, I think, is hockey is, there's no disrespect, but in the in the sort of the order of big the big sports in north america there's this please like my sport element to the stanley cup it's the only thing that matters you'd never touch it if you haven't won it like we know like jokingly but not jokingly yeah, like yeah, people yeah. have come at us for like playing around with a parade route or like imagining yeah. a fantasy of a canuck yeah. holding a cup so the yeah. stanley cup is it we know how hard it is to win but it's put on this pedestal so nothing else matters yeah, and again, yeah, it's almost like it was mocked. But to hear you say that these players that it means something that there would be the, like that's what, it should mean something to finish yeah, first yeah, in the yeah. league. But I don't know why it's never really got that traction. The banners well, are mocked, it, merch it, is mocked. You know, it, they don't give out rings or medals. <laughs> it's funny you mentioned the League Cup. Like I've always kind of thought that was a bit of a funny trophy. I mean, I get it, right? You, especially but, but in the, the old days. The NBA is copying copied yeah, it this year, right? No, I get it. No, I get it. And just with some success, I would say, no, I get it. But it, what I was going to say was, was that the League Cup 
has some value. Like people, player, they, they all they have don't, value. They, they, they don't, you know, it's not on the same sort of echelon as as winning the league or winning the the FA Cup, but but it still is a thing. Hey, I won this thing. It's a cool thing to win. And I I think in many ways the President's Trophy is kind of in that same realm now, where it's kind of like. You know, yeah, it showed we did something. It's not the ultimate, right? Like the, it's not the FA Cup. It's not winning the league, but but it is something that you know we did. Hey, I did this. It's it, you know, it would be a cool thing to talk about. It's not. It isn't the leading item in your in on your resume, but it's on there. It was part of a winning team. Like it, it proves you won something, and I think that's where we're at uh, uh, now. And you know, things have evolved. Like we're getting away from a lot of that kind of old sort of. There's only one thing. I mean. And also, you know, the way, way players perceive, obviously, winning has changed. Let's be honest, right? Like, they all dream of winning the Stanley Cup, but most of them know that's probably not going to happen. So they have to focus on other things, whether that's winning the big contract, being the best player in the game, whatever it is. The the targets that are available to these guys have shifted, have evolved, and that's what's going to happen when your league has 32 teams and maybe going to have more. But, Patrick, do you think this is changing amongst the players, that the President's Trophy is a badge of honor? Or do you think it's more, like, I could, the only thing I can compare it to locally is in 2011, that was almost mocked. The players wanted nothing to do with it. You know, you put a banner up and they make, you know, the fans make fun of it. I remember, you know, Wired Aren't having, like, a President's Trophy, either, I think it was either a t-shirt or a hat. And people were making fun of it. It's almost in in irony. Is it because this team made such a quick leap from being, like, so far out of the playoffs the last seven years, really, apart from the bubble year, to like being the best team. Do you think it has more cachet that way, or do you think players actually put more stock in it now? It's a good question, and one I'm going to go explore after this practice today. I think it's an interesting question. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't know if cachet is the word, but I think it's it's perhaps not as sort of denigrated as it might have been in the past. Maybe that's the way to look at it. It, it's not so much that it's raised in stature. It's that the floor is not what it was, I guess. I don't know. Um, I, yeah, it, like I said, without going too far into it, it's a play. I, 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 it stood out to me that, that Miller brought it up. Like, hey, we're trying to win the St- President's Trophy. Like, th- that, that was not a nothing statement, you know. But like you said, 10 years ago, I'm not sure anybody's saying that. So, yeah, well, if there was, if there was one player on that team who I think would would not put any stock in it, it would be JT Miller. Yeah. So the fact that he does, well, I think, says something about that locker room and their their uh, thirst for success, really. Yeah, exactly. That's literally it. And that comes back to the original points. There's a thirst for success here. There's a desire. Um, that's why I think, you know, Rick Tockett speaking the way he does, forcefully, you know, critically when necessary, I, I, I think is perfectly fine this is a group that has matured that accepts the criticism that understands there's going to be criticism um they want critic let's be clear they want criticism i think really only from certain quarters but but it is a bit that you know i mean that is part of rick's thing rick won the stanley cup rick was one of the toughest guys in the nhl rick scored goals like like getting criticism from your from your coach when he's got that resume really does matter it really does deliver and um it's in line with trying to, like I said, like the, the sort of this desire to be the best and win and win and win. And this is just the first step towards that. Um, when you look at these games that are coming up again, still really just ensconced in this this homestand. And hmm. I mean, obviously, the Kings and, and Stars are going to be a little more of a challenge. And then you got the Ducks uh, who aren't. Um, <laughs> What what do you want to see from this team as we head towards the stretch drive here? Because I mean, it's this isn't in years past. You may have seen the playoffs start in the first week of April. Like we're we're going to talking what like around the twentieth, twenty first there probably. Um, so there's still a month to go really until they get to playoffs. But what do you think this team really needs to focus on as they get into that last stretch? Well, I think it's exactly what we talked about last night post game. It's making sure they're defensively sound. I mean, I go back to that win they had against Winnipeg a couple of weeks ago. Um, uh, you know, Ken Weeb, who covers the team for the Winnipeg Free Press, was here, and and I talked to him after the game, and he basically looked at me and said, "Have they, have they been defending like this for a while? Like, I'm like, this is who they want. This is what they've been working towards. This is what they want to be. And uh, the way they're defending over the last, I don't know, two, three, three weeks, you would say, um, it's huge. And you want to see them keep delivering on that. That's partly why Casey DeSmith." You know, Casey is just a good goalie, right? But like he looked, he was untroubled last night. There were multiple times when he was making a save 
and there was no one near him. And that was the statement about the defensive play. I talked to Carson Soucy about this, and he said, "Yeah, that's exactly our target. We need to be that. We need to be that team." So solidifying on that, it's not just def- it's just not the defenseman; it's the whole system. Solidifying that is what they want to focus in on here, and you know, obviously fix, get the power play humming. You know, they had that five on three last night. Had a couple chances. You know, Quinn Hughes hits the post at one point. Uh, on a power play like they need to get that power play humming and as i noted the other day they really got it they, they don't have to be an elite penalty kill but they can't be 20th in the league and they've been 20th in the league they, they've, they've got to pull themselves up a little bit there so it, it's sort of fine-tuning the details get themselves back rolling get everybody healthy like you know obviously touch wood they're hoping to be fully healthy they think that Demko is going to be back sort of a, i think two weeks from now or so thereabouts you know to go to joshua sometime before that um Ian Cole and Elias Lin, Elias Lindholm. Lindholm not uh, not skating today at practice. Um, Rick Tockett admitting he's a bit banged up, but you know he's been talking to us. So you know you think he's just kind of dealing with something minor. Ian Cole as well, and um, just get themselves fully healthy, get ready and prepared, and somehow survive 12 games without having without having any other problems. Um, obviously, you never want to see anyone hurt, but then in hindsight, is was Demko's injury actually a good thing yeah. from the bigger picture? Because a he gets a rest, but b it gives the coach some real impetus to say, let's focus on our defensive structure. We can't hang our backup out to dry here. Yeah. This is really important. We need to be, it, it, it is a point, of, like coaches can say that all they want, but when you were actually like, no, look, our, our, our shutdown guy is hurt, so we've got to be more responsible. Has this worked out actually quite well for the team? Yeah, I would say so. Absolutely, I think that's actually a really strong point. It's not just that Demko needed a break. It's it, it's a it's a subconscious focusing point. You know, with no players going into this going, oh, yeah. you know, I'm doing my work. But there is that notion. Oh, oh, that's true. You know, like they have faith in Casey Smith. You know, they 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 really like the guy. Uh, I think they'd have faith in Archer Silovs if he gets in. Um, but in the end, they're not Thatcher Demko, and and Thatcher Demko emotionally is going to be uh, you're going to react differently to Thatcher Demko emotionally than you are to those other two guys. And so you take that away, and it's just a little bit. Yeah, you're right. You know, this this gets focused. You know, consciously they may actually become aware of that, and not want to think that way. But I think on the whole, you're exactly right. It it it, it is a subconscious sort of confirmation of let's get this right, let's get this sorted, and then when Thatcher comes out, we're going to just shut everybody out. You know, yeah. that, that's where they want to be. Um, let's. I want to touch on a couple of stories that you wrote this week. If people haven't seen them. Problems.com, bankforsun.com. You can go to them first. First of all, the one that you wrote appearing on Friday um, about comparing this team a little bit to right. uh, the past versions. We I was alluding to the 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 uh, President's Trophy winning team of 2011. Um, we did a bit of a pull on that story, and the 2011 team is far and away the best. Like right yeah. now, people are saying that's the best team. Uh, yeah. Like double quadruple what the current version is but this sure. ver- the current version is actually maybe it's a recency bias is ahead of 2003 the 2003 team to me might have been the best team in Canucks history obviously they just flamed out dramatically in the playoffs if not the best team probably that was their best chance to win the Stanley Cup you can sit there and laugh and you say oh well they got to seven games uh-huh. against the Bruins and against the Rangers but really you know those the well, that the 2003 that team, up, when right? you yeah. look at yeah, when you look at how it fell, that they had the Ducks in the Wild if they'd got by the Wild, and then the Devils and like that team was built to win right. a Stanley Cup. So I'm a little surprised at that. But how do you rank them yourself? Well, I mean, the 03 team in the end didn't have the goalie, and it stands out. You look at the Cluche. You know, Cluche might have was, seemed like a great character guy, loved in the room. But the truth is, is that that was the be- his best save percentage of his career was that season, and it still wasn't league average. So what happens if they have a goalie? You know, you go and look at that series that they blow against Minnesota. They're up three one. You know, what was the Bertuzzi line? Don't plant, don't buy tickets for Game Six. Yeah. They blow it at home in Game Five. Can't seal the deal in Game Game Six. And then like they were leading two one <laughs> going into the third period, if I'm not mistaken. Like they were winning that game uh, on Game Seven against Minnesota, and they couldn't get it done. So you know the. the, the you know, and Marcus Naslin, obviously, with his famous line and everything about choking. And, uh, you know, it's a team that should have been better at, I think, the New Year's. They were the best team in the NHL. They had a tough second half, some of that their own making. Um, I think in hindsight, there's, I'm not saying, I'm not saying fire the coach, but 
you know, Mark Crawford didn't play the Sedins enough. You know, the Sedins, if the Sedins had played more, I think that's a very different story. But well, anyway. But Patrick, that team, I will say about that team, though, and this was, that was the heart of the Devils, you know, that certainly the Ducks at that point sure. got to that point, the yeah. Wild. Like, it was trap hockey. That yeah. Canuck team, they would be going into a third period down two goals and you knew sure. they were going to win. Yeah. They were like an anomaly. They were a unicorn in that league and that they were, were not playing the trap. They no. were playing offensive. Yeah. Yeah, and, to their credit, and, and, absolutely. Yeah, and, yeah, and, and, the best, and it was the just such a complete team. Point. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Mark Snazzle was the best player in the world. Like, yeah, anyway, a, a team that, that in his, you know, I, I, Trevor Litowski, when I asked him about it, you know, he's interim coach of the Habs right now. And when I asked him about it, you know, oh, that's tough. You know, it was sort of the question, the memory. You could just tell, you know, he was really, that team was a great team. And he said that was, you know, the most fun he had probably ever had. Um yeah, so it deserves better. But 2011, I mean, come on. Like, that team was so deep, um, so strong, so dominant. You know, in the end, also played an upbeat, up-style, up-tempo style. style. Um, you know, in the end, let's not revisit that too much. <laughs> but what happened in the end. But, but yeah, a great team. Deserve, again, you know, like, those two teams, you know, t- 2003, yeah, like, the carpet was laid out for them to win the Stanley Cup and they couldn't do it. 2011, you know, they got there as close. And, you know, after game two, as I've said, so, so many people have said, no, they're never going to win because after game two, we all thought, oh, this might actually, this is going to happen. And then it didn't. So that's the, you know, that is the yeah. plight of the Canucks fan, right? Um, anyway, it's... Well, on on that on that point, and we'll, I, we don't have an... I, there's something else I want to get to uh, from another one of your articles, but I just want to make this point because I think this might be a good off-season uh, conversation, but in 2003, you might have had one loudmouth in the bar saying stuff and be like, yeah, whatever. Now that loudmouth's on social media and they may get attract yeah. other loudmouths and have traction. But I saw yeah. a couple people yeah. this week trying to make the case that Quinn Hughes is the best player in Canucks history, mm-hmm. may, saying he's better than Bure, better than the Sedins, like we've never seen any. And I'm thinking to myself, can you win a playoff series like in like actual proper playoff hockey first before we start putting people in this category? Like, you know, and that's not to denigrate Quinn Hughes, but that's where I think it'll be fascinating to see what happens in the playoffs here. I certainly think he's, you know, the best defensive, certainly the most talented, but you know, when you look at what attaches people to Canuck lore, it's getting to the, it's those long playoff runs, right? That's, and that's why that 2000 team finishes distantly in that poll because they, they choked in the playoffs, no matter how good their regular season is, tying in the President's Trophy regular season success, I guess. So let's talk a little bit about the other thing you did this week, which I loved, which was them potentially wearing the skate jersey in the playoffs. And I know right. everything is marketing now. Funny, I saw that the Washington Capitals are unveiling a cherry blossom jersey uh, because of all the cherry blo- uh, cherry trees okay. they have in Washington. I'm thinking, hmm, copycat league, how long till we see that here? Um, but... I was a little surprised um, knowing that there's a very vocal attitude against the whale amongst fans because they associate it with Orca Bay. Yeah. But in, in, I mean, far and away the skate, like, honestly, I don't see how the team can ignore this. I know it's a non-scientific survey, but uh-huh. 81% of the people said that they, they, that the skate should be the primary Jersey for the Canucks. Yeah. Um, the whale was second with 12% and stick and rink was a distant last and with yeah. just 7%. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Sports uniforms to me are like this theory I heard about music. When you're in high school, whatever music you listen to will never be like you'll like current music when you're older, but yeah. that music holds a special place in your part yes. and movies. Yes. And I think it's the same thing with uniforms. Yes. And so I think the, the, there's so many people now who are in this era where they look back on 94 fondly. Um, I, I'm I'm a, I'm a little surprised it was as far away as it or like so like 80 percent um it is you know with three options that's a lot um i i'm partial to the flying v i love the yellow instead of the white even if they on the skate jerseys again because it's different yeah i always thought the canucks should go to green like before dallas started off black as their you know as their primary color before yeah. they flipped to green and the nhl had no green jerseys yeah i always thought if they're gonna be i just like teams that are unique like the kings yeah. were gold yeah. the canucks were gold that was yeah. it yeah what about you? What do you think? You say that the players like the skate. You're more of a skate era. Is I'm that a skate your favorite era guy. Yeah. I mean, in the end, yeah. I, I, I think it's. I. It was certainly unique for its time. Um, 
I, I don't have any particular affinity. I mean, I was in high school when they switched to the, the to the the Orca. I don't have any particular affinity for it though. Even though those teams were fantastic, I don't. You know, I mean, obviously think of those colors and I think of that team. I thought the color choices were great. Um, the logo is fine. It's there's nothing particular to stand out about it. Um, I, 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 I'm glad, let's put it this way, I'm glad they removed Vancouver off the jersey. I always thought that was a, a, a silly design. Well, they added it just for the Olympics, yeah, right? I mean, yeah, right. Like, I mean, in general. Like, start off with just the Orca, then Vancouver comes when they're yeah. selling jerseys for the Olympics. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I think where they kind of land, I'm mostly fine with where they've landed. Um, I'm with you. I do like tweaks. I do like regular shifts. You know, it's, it's not, I, I, that was certainly, I think, you know, coming to soccer in my teens and, and seeing sort of how you get these new shirts and just to sort of trying different ideas, different looks, not being beholden to being one thing. And that's what I have appreciated, I would say, about the Canucks over the years. Because, you know, obviously they've recognized the marketing element of having a new third jersey every couple of years. Like, I get it. Um, that's fine. But, you know, in the end, I like having a slightly different look, mixing it up. It's fun to look down in the crowd every night and see the different versions of jerseys that people are wearing not just the names but the different designs and just there's a bit of a history there obviously you know having changed colors is a bit silly but yeah i get it you know i'm not a huge flying v guy but i get why people like you love it there's also you said that that sort of personal connection to it yeah i mean i think it would be super fun to wear skate in the playoffs i you know i wrote the column that sometimes you write things you don't necessarily are 100 on board with i wrote this one you know thinking no this would be fun i don't know if they'll actually do it I think there is that, you know, someone pointed out to me, there's sort of that corporate element of what do you want to look like when you actually win it? You have to think about that from a branding standpoint. Oh, yeah. You want the picture to be. And I think from that standpoint, the the logo is the C, you know, with the Orca. That's what it is. That's what they'll wear. We'll see. I, I, I'm not holding my breath, but I, but as I've said many times in this league, you never say never. You know, there was a period about 15, 20 years ago where it was becoming more... Um, part of the game where the goalie would come out and handle the puck much more so than they have in the past. And I think it, there were, I can't remember which exec it was, but there was someone who came out with the idea of going the soccer route and putting the goalie in a different color jersey. Yeah, no, that was so a talk about that 20 years ago. No, you're absolutely yeah. right. And of course, hockey being hockey and all sorts of code violations there, people's <laughs> heads exploded like, you can't change that. So never came about. But And soccer's a bit ridiculous with the amount yeah. of changes, but sure. I think it's fun. It's a fun debate for people. I yeah. do like, I, I have to say the black, uh, gold and, and red is such like, again, there's, there's a lot of teams that utilize the royal or the navy blue and black. It's just overdone in all the sports. And I think that that yeah. that's really it's a canuck look and i think you've got to you got to appreciate that all right we'll yeah. finish up patrick with just Bye, what's going i know you got to get to the the rink how many games are they going to win this week uh i'll say well they're gonna lose how many games we got three games four games saturday monday wednesday i can't remember yeah no it's just three games they got flames uh kings and then stars next thursday uh they're gonna win two they'll lose one of those games I agree with that. But they'll win right. two games, they'll knock the Blues out, and they'll be all over. There we go. I, I think I hear Talkit in the background yelling yeah. at you. Either that, and they, they're getting the hot dogs ready for Drance there. So uh, yeah. I'll let you go. And okay. thanks for doing that. Thanks for listening, everyone. Go to theprovince.com, sign up for our Canuck Report. We'll talk to you next week.